Let's jump right into our Eco Battery installation. Don't forget your safety gear and let's start out by taking off the seat. We're going to take some pictures of all the existing wires and turn our toe switch to the toe position. Then we'll start disconnecting all the wires that are attached to the batteries and zip tying everything together. Working our way through the battery chain, we can start to disconnect all the battery wires. The last negative terminal will have a lot of wires attached to it. Make sure to zip tie those together to keep them organized. Now we gotta start removing these brackets that are holding the existing batteries in place. Yikes, there is some corrosion here. There's two big torque screws that we're gonna need to remove. This one I'm gonna have to remove my voltage reducer and fuse box, but it's a pretty easy one to get to. The other side, not quite so simple. It's down here on the passenger side and you're gonna have to remove this fender liner to get access to it. There's four rivets here that you're gonna have to pop. I use a trim removal tool here and in other parts of the video where we're removing these tabs. Move that plastic fender out of the way and now we have access to remove this bolt. Now we can remove all the battery hold downs and also disconnect the watering lines. For removing the old batteries, these battery straps are a must have. I recommend recruiting a second person to help you with this process because these batteries are heavy. Your local battery store should be able to recycle your old batteries. Now that I have full access to this compartment, I'm going to clean out this whole area. Now we're going to start unboxing each component. We have the battery charging port, the wiring harness, the battery gauge and the wires, some hardware, our voltage reducer, this box contains the battery charger itself, and this is a mounting bracket and a threaded post that's going to hold our battery in place. Finally, we have some new two gauge battery wires. In this video, we're replacing our existing voltage reducer. So we're cutting some of the old wires and we're gonna crimp on some new ones. I'm using this old box to create a template for my battery. So when I start putting things into place, I can kind of have a visual for the position. Once I'm happy, I can screw the battery charger into place and start removing the old battery charging port. There's a blue wire here that has a plastic connector. We're gonna disconnect it. We'll get to that one later. The old charging port is connected by zip tie here. So we're just cutting the zip ties, pulling those cords, and then reattaching the rest of the wires by the zip ties again. Now we can pull the old charging port out and install the new one. Now we can connect the charging port to the charger itself through this connector. Here's that blue wire that we were talking about before. We're gonna have to cut it off and then crimp on a new connector. This blue wire is gonna be attached to our positive battery terminal. So we need to give it a long enough line in a ring terminal so that it can reach and connect. Next up is the battery gauge. 
it's going to replace the existing battery gauge and in order to do that we're going to have to remove the side skirts and the floor mat along with the dash. Now we can snake the battery gauge wires down through the seat and up under the floorboards. Once we've pulled back the dash, we have access to the old battery gauge. The old battery gauge is held in with little clips that you push in with your thumbs so you can push them through. Removing the cup holder gives us the access we need to snake the wires up through the dash. The battery gauge is held on through a bracket and nut system. Once we have the battery gauge in place, we place the bracket behind it and screw in the nuts. Now we can plug the connector into the gauge and pull the cord all the way through. Now it's time to close up the dash and put everything back together. I've mounted the new voltage reducer to the removable board and have crimped on new connections. The voltage reducer's key switch wire on the RXV attaches to the solenoid stud with the copper bar on it, which I had installed previously. Make sure to refer to the voltage reducer's wiring diagram during these steps. Once all the wires are connected, I can connect the reducer's wiring harness to the reducer itself. Now we're gonna install our new two gauge battery wires. This is one of those optional but recommended steps. The positive wire is attached to the solenoid and the negative goes on the controller. Once the cover's back on, I'm zip tying the new battery wires to the other positive and negative wires. I've also marked the positive battery cable with a P since they're both identical looking. It's time to clean up the mess. Clear the way for our mounting hardware and battery. I had heard about this gap between the mounting bracket and the bottom of the battery. So I attempt to clear the gap by attaching some pieces of wood to the bracket to lift it up a bit. It didn't work perfectly in the end, and if I were to do it again, I probably would have just shimmed underneath until it was flush. Once the battery is placed, we'll need to line it up with the hole in the mounting bracket and insert the threaded rod. Make sure to give yourself enough threads on the top of the rod so that you can screw in the bolt that secures it down. Now that it's time to attach all the wires to the battery terminals, you'll need to make sure that everything will reach. There's one black wire coming from the cart's harness that I need to extend in order to reach the negative terminal. Once everything safely reaches, we're ready to fasten all the cables to the battery terminals. 
There's no specific torque spec here, so just use your best judgment. Our battery gauge can now be plugged in and then the battery turned on. Finally, we'll flip our run toe switch back to run. At this point, your battery gauge should light up and you can turn your key to make sure everything sounds normal. When charging your battery, you should use a short, heavy gauge extension cord. When you plug it in, the charger fan should turn on and the red light start blinking. Now it's time for a test drive. One final thing, if you want to convert your car into a street legal LSV or low speed vehicle, check out our free mini course at streetwisecarts.com slash LSV mini course. That's it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And thanks for watching. See you next time.